Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Star Citizen Live. Uh, this week's a game dev segment, uh, Concepting Ship Weapons. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee, and joining us on the show this week is somebody new to Star Citizen Live. Actually, somebody new to ATV ISC. I don't know if we've ever had you on anything before, Alex. Uh, tell us who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. Hi, I'm a, I'm a concept artist here in uh, Wormslow office in UK, and currently I'm mostly doing all the hard surface tasks, weapons, ships, uh, nothing organic, just mechanical cold <laughs> space stuff. The cold mechanical space stuff. Yeah. Uh, what? So you're, you're a concept artist. We have a number of in-house concept artists. We have a number of outsourced concept artists. Yep. Uh, as one of our in-house, uh, what are some of the things that you've worked on in the past? So starting three years ago with the barriers, mop buckets, fruit, and slowly moving into the weapons and ship weapons and eventually working on uh, on ships, first being the Vulture, and then the Xi'an ship, and uh, many others. Uh, what, was, what was that Xi'an ship called? Santok Yai, I believe. Oh, there you the go. The medium fighter, yeah. It's always a challenge to see who can pronounce it is, Santok yes. Yai and who can't. It took me a month before Sherry was finally proud of me. <laughs> saying it. Yeah, it's, just, it's not easy. It's not easy. All right. So today's uh, segment is one of our game dev segments. We're going to follow you through the process of creating a couple things uh, over the next hour. Uh, what are we creating today? Uh, so we're going to look into, into what concept art is, because I think a lot of people think that we just make pretty images or marketing shots or beautiful ships, but in reality, concept art is communicating someone's vision uh, to the rest of the team and to the project and taking someone's description of w anything and making a visual out of it so then we can put it in game uh, and present it to everyone. So today we're going to look into uh, some weapon designs. Maybe we'll do some world building and just like very early stage of very, very early stage of concept art uh, process, which is my favorite stage where you can really explore different ideas uh, and just come up with cool stuff. Not too technical, but really focused on the uh, essence of the craft. Sure. Well, uh, you've got everything going. Uh, I'm just going to sit here along for the ride, chime in as yep. the peanut gallery, take some questions uh, from Perfect. the backers along the way. Uh, if you are watching live, you can submit your questions in either the Twitch chat or the uh, Spectrum chat by prefacing your question with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. Remember that Alex here is a concept artist. So if your question is, how will this work? Or when will we get this? Or any of those other real popular topics, uh, Alex is not the person who's going to be able to provide those answers. Today's show is about the creative process, uh, the considerations put into making concept art. And you should try to tailor your questions towards that if you want a chance of them actually being addressed. So Alex, without further ado, I'm going to sit back. I got my drink. I'm going to kick, yep. kick my feet up. Take it away. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's do the... Um, Didn't think I was actually going to put my feet up. Yeah, why not? There we go. All right. So I've prepared a... So we're going to explore some world building. Uh something something very exotic something more mechanical in the context of uh let's say ship weapons weapons or maybe even a quick ship sketch so i prepared eight possible sort of art directions uh, very often uh, i would get a brief from an art director or uh, really anyone like from narrative team and they would describe something to me and then i have to put it into the image uh, so in this case, I'm my own art director, so I chose eight topics. One will be bones. So we're going to try and make a weapon based on bones. We have some ornate relics. That should be interesting for the weapon. Maybe it's like a ancient alien civ civilization or something. We have a African masks. That should be very interesting. Porous rocks. Uh, just standard military weapon toxins, maybe energy weapon, and a question mark, uh, if we get to it, it's going to be something weird and exotic. I like your ambition, Alex. Let's get to it. Yeah, uh, I don't <laughs> know for how many we will go, but I uh, will try to go through as many as I can. 
uh, and I guess we can just uh, we can just start here. We can uh, take a little skull and uh, see what we can come up with. So just do just doodle something. Um, often, like designing anything, needs some sort of the sort of background, I guess. And in the case of the the skull guy, it's uh, it's gonna be a civilization that possibly they maybe they grow everything that they use, including their weapons. Like so, like Cobra Law from GI Joe the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you have, they can't manufacture. They they evolved in a way where they just they just really grow everything. They grow their ships. They grow their weapons. They grow their maybe even possibly buildings. Mm -hmm. And the planet that they live on, it happens to be a bone planet. Maybe the entire planet is slowly growing with them. That could be a very interesting um, uh, thing to explore. So right now I'm just gonna just gonna put down something. It's always very intimidating to start with the empty canvas. So having anything uh, is better than having nothing. Uh, related to this as uh, uh, I missed your name, Snow something, uh, asked if art, if you prefer to have a background story behind a task, such as the history or function, and or, or, or what do you think when given a task for a concept? Uh, yes, I do prefer to have it, if possible, because then it makes my life easier. Because oftentimes, uh, people just... People, people sometimes can uh, use one word to describe what they need something as abstract as like, oh, it's very powerful. And then I have to somehow visualize what is powerful. Uh, so the more the more background information I can have, uh, the easier the easier my job is to translate it into the into the images. Yeah. Uh, another question from the chat as was about metrics. Uh, uh, oftentimes, you, uh, you know, a gun has to apply to many, many different ships, not to one thing specific, so you have to work within metrics. Do you find metrics to help you or to limit your creativity? Uh, in Well, it obviously limits my creativity because our metric system, if I'll draw it right now, because uh, all ship weapons, they kind of follow this, this rough bounding box, so the mounting point and the gun itself, and then it has components that generally are located in the in the same spots mm -hmm. so we can put them on all the ships so within that bounding box uh, i can design whatever i want or whatever the art direction requires but generally it uh, i wouldn't say it's too restricting but if there was no bounding box for example we could concept something that maybe i don't know maybe the mount is at the front and the big bulk of the weapon is at the back or something like that, but we can't do that. Yeah, but the, it would limit the number of ships that it could be placed on. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's it's one of those unfortunate restrictions. You, you need to have metrics so that you can get the most versatility uh, out of out of what you create. Out of what you create. Yeah, that's true. All right. Okay. So we're getting something here. I do want to use teeth because it's uh, it's a uh, it's bones. We use teeth. Um. So generally, in my workflow, I tend to not sketch that much nowadays. Uh, so what we normally do for like the subject, like let's say in this case, like bones, we'd probably use the photo references. And we do, at CAG, we have an internal library of like licensed photos that we can use for marketing or for the concept art. Uh, so that's something I'm going to do in, right now. And it's a very fast and very, very efficient way to... Uh, create designs because like we're not I'm not really an artist and what we do here is not really an art we focus we're designers and we focus on shape form purpose uh, aesthetic so the technique the actual technique of how we create art at least to me it really doesn't matter like if it's if it's faster doing with photos I'll do it with photos if it's faster to do it with the uh, 3d I'll do it with 3d and often actually not often most of the concept art here at least that I do is is 3d uh, but we're not going to touch it today because that's too time consuming so yeah it's 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 important 
it's an important consideration because concepts, uh, concept artists, concept designers uh, have to do oftentimes dozens and dozens of iterations. If, uh, if, you're, if you're a subscriber in the ch and we're watch you're watching the show right now, uh, you may be familiar with our subscriber vault, which is a section of the website that's oftentimes full of alternate concepts that are created throughout the course of a, of a ship creation or a weapon creation that are not used in the final uh, in, in the final creation of the product, but are used to cover the process. It's a process of discovering what we want. You have to make many things that you don't want to discover the thing that you do want quite often. And when you have to make that many iterations, uh, having a library, uh, you know, an officially licensed library of materials that you, that you can pull from uh, really helps to expedite that process. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. Because if, if I would have to draw or model everything uh, or like work in a very specific workflow uh, it would be extremely limiting and I think it's going to be evident by the end of this stream where if we're going to get through quite a few guns even right now we're getting something that looks quite abstract but normally uh, even this something like that is a good conversation starter uh, for me and the art director and the rest of the team where they can look at it uh, and they might not yet understand what that is. So in this case, like, oh, yeah, it's a it's a bone shaped into the gun. But it sparks a lot of the conversations that are useful for the production. So it's the, it's the feedback that I might get is like, OK, the metrics work, but maybe like aesthetics are too like, again, too abstract and we need to make it more recognizable or maybe it's way too organic and we need to add mechanical elements. So that's something. Uh, we could get, but even at this super, super fast rough stage, uh, this is already something interesting. And I think we're gonna do we're gonna do another one for the bones, and maybe then we'll do the third one that will uh, flesh out a bit further. Let me just pull some stuff. Uh, this guy looks interesting. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what we can extract. Also, one thing I love about using photo reference is it gives me interesting textures like so there's no way i would paint or draw this texture mm -hmm. that's just uh that's just too time consuming and then uh in concept art you have to be fast that's why it's called concept folks in chat are all already discussing the gameplay implications of a weapon made of bone and how they would maintain it and so like that. Luckily, that's not something you as a concept artist have to worry about. Uh, no, not really. But uh, <laughs> as a creative person, I'd love to chime in into that. Like if there's a discussion on how this weapon would be maintained, maybe we can come up with some suggestions as well. Bone graphs. I, I was thinking for this guy is the way they shoot, this, this, like this bone structure, it grows projectiles inside of it. So... It's a very slow firing weapon because maybe you need a day to grow a new projectile, but it's very devastating. So you have to be smart when you use it. That's true. If it's there's nothing to say that alien bones can't g continue to grow like long after they've been disassociated from whatever the creature they were part of, like like yep. kind of the ways that fingernails still grow after you die and stuff like that. Maybe maybe the bones of this creature still continue to grow after they're dead. Yeah, that's true. That would make coffin shopping really difficult, though. And now we're going to forget about the bounding box and just go a little bit crazy and see what we can what we can come up with here. Yes, I know fingernails don't actually continue, but I'm saying that that concept exists in the in the in the world, the, the concept of things growing after you die is something that's been considered and exists in storytelling, is what I'm referring to, folks. Again, this stuff is very abstract and very alien, but that's what's interesting about it, because oftentimes when you see like a super polished image or a super polished concept or anything, there is no... Uh, there is no where for your brain to like come up with stuff. It's like when you read a book, and the images come to you. It's the same with this stuff. When we're in meeting rooms and we look at this stuff, people see, everybody sees something different. And uh, there's a certain beauty in that. 
Mm, I think this guy would work. Better this way. Oh. So this this one doesn't really work. Sometimes it doesn't work, but we'll still keep it here. Now what? Now why doesn't that work? Because I was just thinking that I like that one more than the first one. Mm, for me, so the first one is a bit easier to sell as a weapon because it's got uh, a very obvious second. Like this reads as a barrel, and this reads as a body. So right. this is very easy to identify. Whereas this guy, where it could be interesting, like right now, uh, I'm starting to fiddle with it. And generally, if I start fiddling with something and if it doesn't work, I just move on to the, on to the next one. Or maybe, maybe I just don't feel the design because not every design you make actually works or is good. Uh, that's part of the sketching. Yeah. And uh, generally, if, I, if something doesn't work, I don't spend time on it. I just move on onto the next thing yeah. and I try it again. And in in return, it just saves time down the line. Yeah. It looks like kind of looks like you inadvertently made a uh, the anvil hawk just out of bone. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and silhouettes. Um, you know, silhouette reads are one of the mo one of the most difficult parts of concepting. It's trying to find a silhouette that hasn't been used. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let me just try and grab this. This formation is very interesting. Oh yeah. And we're going to try and extract something out of it, but this time I'm thinking maybe, so there is already like this metal part from the museum that they used to keep the bones together for the display. So I thought, what if, what if the civilization, maybe they don't, uh, they don't grow everything and they still have sort of like mechanical parts and in this case maybe they have like barrels that are encased in bones and that they put it on like the ships also would have yeah. a metal core or like a metal structure and then the the armor is the bone planting around it that could yeah. be interesting yeah where the where the bone is more ornamental than it's yeah, or or it's just purely protective material, like like the like the turtle shells in Enemy Mine. Yeah, I'm just dropping all the really obscure 1980s movie references today. Oh, it's gonna be hard for me. I didn't watch them. GI Joe. Them. I, I know you've been very good at just saying, "Oh yes, of course." Like you knew it. <laughs> I've really appreciated the way you've not made me feel like a weirdo today, Alex. You're okay. very polite. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm really bad with old sci-fi movies. I get in a lot of trouble for that. I think this one is really successful. This one that you're doing right here. Yeah, it's we're getting somewhere. And normally if I start sort of feeling the design, I don't know how better to explain it. It's just like you look at it and you're like, okay, okay, this works, this works. Um, I just tend to push it further or oftentimes I will run it past the like the rest of the team members so uh, any feedback is a good feedback even if it's negative and there was a lot of cases where we solved complicated design problems as a team here uh, so that's always fun that's what's one of one of the perks of working in house where you have very talented people especially here uh, that can help you grow and Learn new things. Sub zero one says something interesting in chat. He says, uh, "I would think concept art is all based off existing lore, but it seems like new lore is created along with concepting. Uh, sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's th it's the other. Uh, I I can think of a number of times, yeah, in the five years that I've been here at least, where you know we'll start out with a specific lore." an idea you know an idea for a thing and then through the 
concept the process through the exploration of ideas we'll actually stumble into something that we like more than what our original intention was and then lore will go back and adjust the lore if you you know if you find something that's really cool if you find something that's truly unique and interesting and inspiring uh, it would be a shame to throw it away because you were too beholden to your original idea that's actually one of the things that I like most about Star Citizen as a project is that we're never quite we're never too afraid to to follow the the better idea. Mm. I'm looking for something here, but I can't find it. Ah, uh, never mind. I was about to do like a quick environment sketch for what the bone world could be, but I think it's better. <laughs> we'll move to the to the next weapon. So here we have free oh, bone so world. Free, we hardly knew you. Uh, free sketches and so the middle one normally if it's something I don't like I don't show it so we're not gonna show it and these two I think quite interesting and they could be pushed uh, uh, further uh, it's very raw but at this stage is where you have the most fun because you can really explore all these ideas and later it actually gets very very technical where you have to model it or animate or figure out the metrics and it becomes very constrained uh, just a part of the normal production pipeline but at this stage this is uh, this is why concept art is the the best discipline is because you have a lot of fun yeah. uh, process question are you you're obviously using a tablet of some kind are you using one yes. of the clintiques where you draw on the screen or you have ex an external tablet yeah, it's uh, uh, I use the the this guy. It's the the one on the table, just a normal one. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I know I know some artists prefer to draw directly on the screen, and they have the big, you know, yeah. screen tablets. And some people prefer to have it, you know, down at like mouse level, and you know, just draw off the screen. Because originally when I joined, I had the the big screen, but I just found it. For me, it didn't work. My hand was in my, in my face, and right. it was big, and uh, I just switched uh, to just a normal tablet. Okay, uh, I'm just looking for some reference to kick off the the ornate gun, and I already found something interesting that we can start uh, playing with. Again, using existing reference, because drawing all of this stuff is just possible but incredibly time consuming and again concept art is all about that ideation boom done okay okay there's another thing here so the idea for this guy maybe this civilization is all about time everything is based on time so even their guns Maybe you can only fire them at a certain time. That could be interesting. I'm just, I'm just going to sit quietly and watch the Twitch chat for the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like something out of... I, I don't know. When I see this, I, inst I instantly think of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Uh, yes... Uh, the, the, his, the, the, in most interpretations of his, in most interpretations of his machine, it's very ornate, and yeah, a, you know, a, a classic like this. And of course, the big clock doesn't hurt. Mm, I'm thinking we can go for different silhouette for this guy, so it's not standard tapered weapon, which is just very safe and easy design and for this guy let's just try oh this is interesting of course if you did have a weapon that could only fire at certain times you you, you, you it already comes with your built-in one-liner you know right before you shoot somebody it's time yeah. to die i thought i was gonna Maybe it's a cannon i thought this i was guy gonna jj to big. groan on that one he didn't though There he goes. Is this guy working? I'm not sure. Again, very abstract, but 
could be elaborated into very, very interesting ideas. You know, the canon idea is really interesting because, you know, just in, I don't know, I associate the ornateness, the the austerity here with, you know, 19th century, 18th century stuff. That, that's that's my personal association. So making it a big canon also fits in with that kind of mental association that I've got going on. Yeah, because uh, what I also love is that one of the best ways to come up with ideas is to mix things that are unre unrelated. So let's say 19th century ornate canon maybe we can mix it with the like with the spaceship so we're gonna move this guy down captain richard says it's the concierge cannon <laughs> <laughs> oh what is this guy here oh this is interesting no i have a feeling this is not this is not gonna work uh, this guy does not want to work. Let's move on. Maybe, maybe the way this gun works is that by shooting an enemy, you don't harm them, but you take their time away. And when they shoot you, they take your time away. It's a debuff instead of a damage. Yeah. Or maybe you can help your buddies and give them more time. I'm thinking maybe it's it works like the uh, like the traditional clock inner workings, where it's a lot of gears. There you go. And that could be interesting. So like in this case, I'm not really using photos and just just drawing of what I think could be interesting. Then there's a mounting point to keep it in line with metrics. Gold coin. And all of these like guns or art styles that I've chosen, they might be they might seem very random, like why would you do the rocks or why would you use any of these weird objects or scenarios? And it's because as a concept designer you should be able to work in in any style, in any any direction, mm -hmm. uh, any sort of time period, whether it's sci-fi, medieval, or uh, or any other timeline that we don't know about. Yeah, and you know, someone in the chat was uh, suggesting that even if it's not something specifically time-related, with your gears and it could be some, it could be a weapon that you have to wind up as opposed to as opposed to like an energy charge. Yeah, you can sit there and have to wind it up just like you would a watch. Watch all the gears turn, you know, click into place and then release. Uh, well, the fact that people mentioned that that means uh, I'm doing my job right, and it inspires them to come up with their own uh, their own ways to see this. And this is actually what's happening in a lot of meetings where people just like, oh yeah, it would be cool to do this or to do that. So yeah, great. Let's turn it into. <laughs> An actual <laughs> right. mentioned rifle. Uh, Draugr. Draugr goes, oh, 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 man, a, a gun that adds more quantum t travel time to your ship. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that would be interesting, yeah. I'm bringing that to John Crew. If that happens, everybody, blame Draugr. So there is a... All right, that's interesting. Uh, should we should we move on to the? Sure, we're about halfway to the mask. We're about halfway to the show right now. Because I don't know, maybe people want to see like a specific thing being done, and uh, I'm 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 happy to jump over into anything. Or if they will, if somebody wants to see it being more finished, then we can do that as well. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and move on to the to the next one? Because I was I was really interested in seeing the next one personally. Yeah, and then um, folks, me too, me too. Folks in the chat, go ahead and uh, you don't necessarily need to follow the options that are here on the screen, but 
go ahead and start suggesting a type of ship weapon you'd like to see, and I'll pull one that I think is interesting. We don't have a vote set up, so I'll be the adjudicator here. Okay, let's go on to the masks, and this one will be the most difficult ones. Oftentimes, uh, some tasks are extremely abstract and extremely broad-ranged. So in this case, like, oh, hey, it's a ship weapon that based on, like, uh, traditional African artifacts or masks. And how does that tie up into, into like, a space theme? So we're going to try and... Uh, maybe come up with something. Cause drawing drawing uh, like a standard hard surface weapons is is fairly easy. Wouldn't say it's super easy, but it's not that hard. But coming up with the new stuff that is maybe somewhat weird but still believable and plausible that's uh, that's hard. I like this. This looks like a wiring part. Oh, it's it's cast metal, but I kind of like it to use that as a barrel texture. That could be very interesting. Mm, nope. It's going to be a wooden space gun. There we go. Be protected from EMP. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Uh, actually, actually, looks like a melee weapon. Stick to the guns. Mm. Interesting textures. Let's try this guy. Ooh. Yeah, I really like these beans being used. So this is going to be probably the most non-sci-fi weapon, but we're going to get to the sci-fi weapons. What could that be? What could that be? I'm thinking maybe there is a sort of mounting point here on the side. Mm -hmm. And then the way we would attach this guy, it would be on the manned turret. Right, just because your mount is on the side of the weapon instead of the top. So Yeah, so I'm thinking, because it doesn't... I'm not really feeling it as a normal gun, so we're gonna do quick uh, vis dev for the for the possible turret. And again, for those of you who've just joined us that may not have been here from the beginning of the of the show, uh, we're we're here today with uh, Alex from our uh, concept team in Wimslow, and he's going through the process of creating a number of. Uh, various ship weapons in different styles uh, when you have to create dozens and dozens and dozens of concepts uh, to find the right look and feel for just any individual item uh, it's important that you can iterate very quickly and one of the ways that we do that is by utilizing a licensed uh, library of various images to get us started along a path so that you don't wait a waste a 
bunch of time creating textures for something that ultimately you're not even gonna, you're not going to use. Yeah. Obviously, if any one of these were to go into production, uh, that's the point where we'd start creating our own bespoke textures and you know and, and, and start fleshing it out with, with you know with with more detailed work. But yeah, this is super early stage. Yeah. Just re this is the best stage. This is this might look like the roughest stage, but honestly, this is the best stage because then it's pure exploration. Yeah. After this, I take. I can take something as raw as like this sketch and just go into 3D and start figuring out how that would sort of fit onto the ship or if it even works. All right. I, I want a ship with a giant mask of Anubis on top now. Yeah. That would be awesome. We've, we've, kind of, we've kind of stretched from African to a little bit of Egyptian influence here. Although the could Egypt is in Africa, so I'm sure that's still appropriate. We could make like a uh, pyramid ships. <laughs> no, no sci-fi franchise has ever used pyramid ships before. No. Again, here's a like I do. I do a lot of like this looks horrible, but this is majority of the concept art that we actually do that's never been seen and it's really the the most important part it's the exploration and everybody here goes through it and it's not pretty but it's the most valuable part sometimes it does not even make sense to anybody other than me and that's the that's sort of the point. Boom. There we go. If there are any concept artists out there, they will agree with me. Done. All right, let's uh, let's leave the masks alone for now, and let's jump into something more. Uh, something more traditional, I guess. So we'll take the the AR, AR-15 here and we'll just make a, just like a very generic sci-fi ballistic weapon. Because often, often we just need something that just looks like a, like a gun and doesn't have any sort of crazy art direction behind it or crazy style or maybe it's a just a just a human manufacturer that's been around for centuries and they just sort of stuck with the uh, with more traditional designs you go, go with what you know so we're just going to extract all of our information from just this one picture what we can come up with. Looks like a, looks like a machine gun. So maybe we will do flat barrels always look sci-fi. This kind of starts looking like a like a Hurston weapon. So why don't we make it a bit more Hurston? I mean, now that's always a, a a matter of opinion with folks. We 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 hear that a lot. That looks like Aegis. That looks like Anvil. That doesn't look like you know Crusader or whatever. Uh, what you just mentioned Hurston. What about this? meant Hurston to you? 
Uh, so for me, it's this underbarrel part that I added. And the reason why I added there is probably just subconsciously because I did design quite a few Hurston weapons. So I naturally sort of, I guess, uh, it went towards that style and uh, I decided right now to roll with it and why not? And then uh, the flat barrel also, Hurston guns have flat barrels and they have flat copper barrels. So I thought maybe we can turn this into like a very, very primitive, like it's it's one of like the first Hurston guns, like ultra low tech, almost a relic mm -hmm. that you cannot even fit on ships because it's just incompatible it's that old but it still has similar aesthetics so if if it were to be in game and people would see it and they'll be like oh yeah it's a it's a it's an old hurston gun hopefully Uh, so right now there's a bit of balance issues. It's it's very thin and all the parts uh, are equal. So one of the things we try to avoid as a general art rule is keeping stuff same size. So right now this guy's here is nearly it's exactly the same the same size and they visually they're competing and it's not that pleasant to look at. So we either need to lengthen or shorten this guy, which in my case, I'll lengthen it. Or maybe we need to rebalance uh, this part here. And now now we have another intentional misbalance here where the barrel is way too long and thin compared to the body, so easy solution is to scale it up. And it instantly looks good. And it took me a few seconds to do that, but if I would, let's say, if I would go with the with this design and I would take it into 3D and I would start to block it out and it wouldn't work in 3D, it would take a lot of time to sort of fix. So solving as many problems as possible in this stage is really the key. Maybe a bit negative space here. I do like this texture here, but I would like it to be maybe more frequent. Maybe that's a, like a cooling unit. Yeah, there's another good plug. If you're watching the show and you're a subscriber, you can check out the Subscriber Vault, uh, which is a gallery of images published every week, uh, going back <laughs> all the way to 2012, I think. Uh, December 2012 is when we started, uh, and it's full of uh, it's full of alternate concept art. So you can see the exploration of, of you see this type of exploration on a uh, great many of our ships, uh, ship weapons, FPS weapons, uh, uh, planet environments, stuff like that. It's always a uh, we we are seeing the earliest steps in this process, which is, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of a kit bashing of various ideas to to discover a silhouette, to discover shape language, to discover uh, just an overall theme of what works before we waste anybody's time actually building something out in more detail. Yeah, that's actually a very good ex explanation because concept art, that's where you waste time. That's <laughs> that's why we're here. It's I don't remember, I think it was Paul who said it or somebody said it in office. We're here to waste time, so the rest of the production don't have to because we're yeah. at the beginning of the production, like very, very early stage. So we are the guys to waste time. I'll often go by. We have a we have character concept artist uh, Jeremiah in the studio, and he, mm -hmm. he'll often, you know, it, it's I'll often tease him because most of what he works on will never be seen or used in yep. the game. He's like, yeah, I'm making another version. We we want we want to see what that looks like like this. And uh, you know, chances are it won't be what we're looking for either. But that's yeah. what that's what concepting is. It's finding all the things you don't want until you find the thing that you do. Yeah, that's true. So let's put these guys aside and let's move on, on to the I kinda have an idea for this 
this barrel. Saw the image of this barrel, and I thought it's awesome. Barrels are awesome. Uh, this is going to be our toxic gun. Maybe it melts the ship's hulls. Like it, like it shoots sludge instead of... Yeah. Okay. okay. That was actually one and of the ideas we had in the chat earlier. When we were taking all right. ideas. So it's basically... Maybe maybe it's almost like a pirate or griefing weapon or something that's mass produced and not really durable or well put together. Hence the use of this this tape. Like the barrel is actually taped to the rest <laughs> of the to like the upper receiver. So once you use it, there's a high chance that you know the thing will actually fall apart and damage your ship rather than doing anything to any other ships. Uh, so that's actually, that's that's a very interesting idea here. And um, a date cable, you said it, I didn't say it. I'm going to have a big pipe. Pipes are awesome. Is this working? No. Maybe it like wraps around and then sort of connects on the other side yeah we need some like tubing or something to get the yeah the sludge but out it's, of the barrel. it's really it's really uh low tech so let's let's just let's just quickly stop here and take this guy and then we will take the same idea but we will make it a bit quick iteration on how it could be a high tech like what if it's not mass produced what if it's actually well built and what if it's pardon me what if it always works so maybe the tank would be in this enclosure and then the components so like this this pipe here it's actually inside and it's enclosed. So everything is really nice and durable. And I like the idea of having the frames around it. That could be a visual hook and could define, like, maybe define the manufacturer. So, like, the art direction for this manufacturer would be like three, three stepping stones would be they use the dark color, they use the yellow color. And then they use framing. So there you go. That's the art direction for this manufacturer. And then based on that, we can create uh, more variations. So here's like a more high-tech version, but I still like the non-durable one. I'm going to push it a bit more. Very makeshift. The tank could be full of like toxic waste. Yep. We need to find a way to repurpose all this toxic waste we're creating from whatever other industry Hurston's involved in. I just could, decided could it was possibly her. be. A I just decided it was Hurston. Who else would make a weapon that pumped out toxic waste? Maybe originally, like this this part here was actually a maybe they took it for the from the water treatment plant. Let's say the ship would have let's say if the ship has a water treatment plant. It's like I don't know, a sci fi component that processes uh, like the water through it, or like a pump, maybe it's a pump. So they to, they maybe they salvage these pumps from the ships, and then they salvage like the maybe the container or like this this liquid tank thing is just a just a normal prop barrel from some planet, and they 
put these all components together and that's how they make these weapons and each of them is completely like not completely but slightly different than the previous one because it's all makeshift so you never have two this two of the same they just use the normal tube it's not even well integrated it's just a just a pipe maybe they stole the pipe from like an outpost they ripped it out they use this for a gun Could be interesting. I used to live next to a water treatment plant. It was a wonderful smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can imagine yep. having this gun on a ship wouldn't be nice. Mm -hmm. I lived two blocks north was a water treatment plant, and two blocks south was a dairy farm. That area oh. smelled wonderful. So uh, I just want to quickly see where we at with our weapons manufacturing here going on. Let's get rid of this guy. It's not good. Oh, I like the Anubis turret. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> General rule for the concept between concept artists. If you don't like something, don't show it. Because there's a chance that it's going to get picked and then you have to finish it. <laughs> uh, that is a... Uh, that's a story I can't tell. But uh, oftentimes... Uh, there, there's a philosophy that's sometimes used where you'll, sh you'll show three things you... You'll, you'll include something that's obviously bad so that the uh, person who approves will have something very easy to say no to. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, so that's true. So that, so that you'll get the thing that you want. And uh, when that backfires and the person picks the thing that you included <laughs> that was supposed yep. to be the obvious no. Uh, someday when I write my memoirs, I'll tell some stories. I'm going to quickly do just a very generic weapon based on this, uh, I believe it's a uh, the power generator from the car or something. But I'm going to do like a quick, is quick it gun out of it. Alternator? Maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I like the cutaway and I like the colors, that's why I picked it. Uh, yeah, oh, it looks like cutaway of a piston. So if we take this guy, actually, if we take this whole part and do something like that. This thing is chunky. Okay, so in less than an hour, we came up with a interesting variety of sort of sort of where various styles and various very raw designs that none of them are really finished or really maybe even plausible, uh, but. Uh, for one hour, I think it's not bad. And at this point, you can pull in the the rest of the team or the art director or whoever else is involved. And uh, even at this stage, people can look at it and be like, "Oh, you know what? I like the I like the makeshift gun. Like this is an interesting direction for, let's say, a new manufacturer. Uh, let's 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 take it further. And from there, I can take this guy and maybe block it out and make it." nice and more finished or maybe they will pick uh, this guy and be like yeah you know what we, we like the to add like this gun to the hurston family so let's go with this one uh, because we already have the manufacturer 
or maybe it will inspire people to create something bone based it's these these sketches really are just conversation starters mm -hmm. and almost every concept has them and this is where people generally are the most enthusiastic so enthusiastic about the the design because nothing is set in stone everything is open to interpretation and it's like reading a book people see this stuff and they create their own stories or they see their own things and they uh, sort of add it to the design and it's always awesome to see and hear what people have to say about these all right so we've only got about five minutes left i don't know if we have enough time but there was one idea from the from the chat that i wanted Let's to present go. to you uh it, it, it's 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 one line, and I want to. You take it where this one line sends you. Something that punches above its weight class. Mm, something that punches something above that its punches above its weight class. I think. Mm, yeah, actually. <laughs> Let me see. Let me, I'm looking for a. Do I have it? I think I can do something with it. Yeah, definitely. There we go. There we go. So, how would that work? Okay. Let me just quickly sketch out a spaceship here. I don't remember the tail, how the tail looks like, no. So there we go, there's this guy. Then you probably need a bunch of them. To maybe take on the... On the big ship. This is something we do very often here. People come up with random ideas and then I have to draw them. <laughs> and we have many, many, many pages of, of these guys that nobody will ever see. And these things keep us sane. Okay. Actually, let's uh, let scale this guy up. So the way it would work is that you got to fly in to the bigger ship, like closer, and then this leg would... It's not long enough. Just what's going on here? Then you can you can kick the ships, see? That would be my, my solution for that. Uh, but in all seriousness, for the guns, like with descriptions like that, it would probably have to be something visually, something that is on a small ship. But generally, if I would get that task, it would be like a very, very big barrel. Like, it, let's say it's S1 gun, but when you look at it, the barrel is very prominent. Let's say it's a small gun with very, very, very big barrel. Or maybe there's multiple barrels. So visually, that would be the solution for that uh, sort of problem. 
And we shall call it the ship kicker. The ship kicker, yeah. So maybe. So I can totally see like this guy in the context of the person would be. Something really, really bulky. It's often a very, very difficult to design something that's... Oh, it's very small, but it has to be very powerful, or it's very big, but it has to be extremely weak. Uh, those ones visually are definitely harder to solve. Uh, but yeah, that would be, be my solution. Big barrel. Well, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Thanks, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> you can stop the screen share now. You want. Right. Um, that's it. Thank you for taking time to out of your Friday at the end of our week to, to sit here and take us through your process. Um, thank you. Concepting is not something I think we get to show enough process of every almost everything starts with 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 a concept much like the way that you saw whether it's a spaceship or a character or a ship weapon or a prop or or, or anything that populates the entire persistent universe and I wanted it was a it was a good chance to show how the generation of ideas begins before these things go off to 3D artists or even uh, other 2D artists to to develop into more fuller, um, fully realized ideas. Um, that's it. So Alex, thank you so much uh, for. Thank you. you. Yep. In case anybody's watching that hasn't hasn't heard the news, uh, Alpha 3.7 is in, currently in Wave One PTU. So if you are in Wave One PTU, uh, you can download that and jump in now and help us bang on the pipes, as it were. Uh, keep your eye out over the next couple of days. I've got no timeline for this. Well, when it's ready, it'll extend past into additional waves and then eventually make its way into the hands of everybody when it goes live. So yeah, for, for Alex, uh, I'm Jared. Thanks for watching Star Citizen Live. Remember, we're also still on hiatus for Inside Star Citizen. We'll be back on October 23rd. So keep an eye out for that and uh, take care. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.